you still tra- talk to me about martial arts, wrestling. I mean, do you still actively train? Is this something that's part of your life every day? I mean, I'm, look, wait, wait, I wait, wait, see wait, okay. I mean, if you have I'm a, a, I'm a 64 year old cat, baby. I don't look 64. I don't act 64. I don't move 64. If you had to guess, one of us trains and one of us doesn't. I'll let you pick which one. I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I will always train only because the reality is you get only one body, one life to live. I've already lived the life of half a dozen men over. I continue. I want to live another half a dozen men's lives at the same token. I've even had to, had the questionnaire with my better half already. I go, baby, I go off. When you, when your time come and, and you have to pass on. I want to see a 118 yeah. year old dance ever out on the prowl, like just, just cruising for yeah. chicks and the yeah. old folks. So, <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I'll have that checker shirt. I have those plaid pants, a little bow tie. I'll have those half of those straight hairs combed over just right, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. You did this bit of party life, right? Do you still watch the sport? Is this is it something that you pay attention to? No, I mean. Probably not the best answer to my back with, but no, oh. I never watched it in the first place. But you know what? But you're not alone in that. There's so many fighters that don't watch well, fights. They say, look, I live this every day. It's not my entertainment yeah, on the week. But- Network or you're watching the pay per views, it's every it's hard, single it's weekend. It's hard to keep up with it. And then, if you want to, you know, really dive into it, you can jump on the internet and jump on, and into all other kinds of things. I go, I live a life outside of. You know, what I did as an amateur wrestler, what I did as a professional wrestler, what I did. Enforcement officers shouldn't be trained in martial arts. That seems silly to me. There seems to be a debate. Like they need to understand how to control a suspect, a, you know, a, a potential criminal. If they don't know what they're doing in the terms of grappling. That's just dangerous. Yeah. Well, well, when you think about it, everything in law enforcement eventually turns to the ground because how are most handcuffs put on? You're usually belly down, hands behind your back, and then literally, if, if, if you need to teach certain basic elements of whether it be Amateur wrestling or some other elements you have to be able to teach them in order to know how to use body weight. Yep. Look at the sport of amateur wrestling. We're the only country. The United States is the only country that does folk style wrestling. Right. The rest of the world does either freestyle.
or is it too ingrained? Into- you know, I mean, I, I can't say that it will never happen because things will. The sport has changed a lot over the time that I've been involved with the sport of amateur wrestling alone. So, I mean, change will continue to happen. It should happen a whole lot faster. If you really want to have a lot more athletes be successful in the world champions at every four years, the Olympic Games, you had better implement freestyle Greco now. I'd love to see it. Sport of mixed martial arts, I know you don't watch a ton of it these days, but did you ever, I mean, think it would be like this? I know it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a silly question, but I know when I started following the sport in the early days, I loved it. I fell in love with it right away. I said, oh. this is the greatest sport on the planet, but I never thought this was going to happen. Did oh, you see this it, coming? Yes. Wow. Oh, but only if it was going to be legally allowed because there were so many athletic commissioners, so many different legislators and politicians that were coming after the sport, trying to do away with this, the, the no holes barred, barbaric, you know, you had Senator John McCain, one of the biggest advocators yes. trying to do against this sport and that. So it's, uh, it's through the education and compromises, rule after rule that had to be added, weight classes, wearing gloves, Time periods? Come on now. Awfully civilized right now. I like the more the, the barbaric days of where two men will walk out there. Eventually, we will find out somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to be unconscious. <laughs> Eventually. Just depends. Could be done. In, it, during, a lot of people don't realize this. During the no holds barred era, most matches lasted, I think, two minutes, 22 seconds. Right. A very barbaric two minutes and 22 seconds. Right. But now with knowing that we have rounds, if, if, if you're close to the end of the round and you're in a bad situation, I'll be out there. Just hey, hold on, you, right? You, you, hey, you got 20 more seconds. Hang in there to where now, okay, the time the period runs on out. You, okay, referee, stop the match. You stand up. You know, I'll be yelling at you. Come over to this call over here. But, but That's again, an interesting point. I hadn't really thought about that. That's a great one, point. For, for one minute, I get to towel you down. And where do they restart the match? On their feet. Again, but if – once you're down and you're in a compromised position and all that person is doing is punishing you, eventually you're going to say, hey, it's time to go tap, tap, or yeah, go yeah. press the referee or miss referee. I've had enough fun for the night. So you'd prefer like maybe just like one 15-minute round or something like that? Or no? are you saying no time uh, limits? Again, if you went back to that, the, just a no time limit. One round, no time limit. The, the hard part, I don't ever foresee that happen because TV. it's a pain for me yeah. event. And if and if, if matches, that was I was actually involved in, in uh, the match set uh, against Royce Gracie, right. where the average match, no match is going to be out four minutes, and we went to shy of I think sixteen minutes or something, sixty or seventy minutes. And, and all I know is that the the uh, the internet went off the went off the air, yep. so people are like, "Man, I want my money back. Who won that match?" Blah blah blah. So I understand it from a company's perspective, you had to have time time constraints, but the whole UFC has evolved so much they have all the, in case I need filler. Well, earlier today, this is what the athlete had to say about this. Here's some here's some video action you had trained in this. They have so much footage in the can, they can fill whatever time slot they so need true. to. So true. Because even tomorrow night, oh, there's still, even there's, tomorrow oh. night, you can have the main event five rounds, but it could be all, that first match can be done in the first. Yeah. What's the, what's the best of match so far? Six seconds? Right. And what are you going to do for the rest of that time? Filler. You need filler. You talk about time limits, right? Talk about limits for your career. Wait, what was the 127 pro fights you had? 127 I've got there. Okay, we'll get <laughs> so when <laughs> but, but that, that might not be that might okay. not be completely. That, that, more, that number it? is I'll say close. Give it maybe another 20, 30 match for comfort margin. Oh, because the watchdogs of wrestling, the sheer dog, the full contact yeah. fighters, they did not exist until three, four, five years after the fact. You predate and records. They, and they only ever followed one company, the UFC, because they were at first. But once the UFC broke bread, you had all these different businessmen pressing business cards into my hands, call me. To be invited to uh, festive type activities where um, <laughs> they're going to start off. Uh, well, here, here's what I'll say that I was invited to. They were going to have an oversized cockfighting pit, oversized cockfighting pit. They would start off with roosters, <laughs> progress to dogs, and main event with human beings. And they wanted me to be one of those human beings, but they want to be better than the UFC at the time. They they were going to allow you to wear blue Levi jeans, cowboy boots. Damn. 
Steel toes. Yeah. When, when, how many times have you been approached <laughs> for uh, like a movie or a book deal for your life? Say again for a, a book deal or a movie deal. The story uh, of Dan the Beast well, Seven in movie. Form. People don't know enough about me. I, I think that well, we, this is what we need to know. Okay, there's, we, we there's, more, there should be. I, I do have one book out already. I'm actually in the process of another book. The first book was, I'll say, a nice little read. The next, the second book, number two, I want to grab you by the scruff of the neck. Yeah, I want to. I want to slam your your head on, on on a few times into that cow pie of reality, so you realize, you know, this cat. When you think about it, I started my athletic career seventh grade, nineteen sixty nine. So I could be in the sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousand, two thousand ten. Who says I'm done? I still do professional <laughs> matches even now. Still got another. You still got one more in you. Well, again. I'm living to be 125. Well, I'm not going to be sitting around in the kitchen. <laughs> I would have been uh, talking to town there at that. At the old <laughs> folks there. I'd be like, ladies, ladies, one at a time, please. <laughs> so are we saying you you technically? <laughs> now, come on now. I might not have a fun here or what. I love I'm, it. I'm, I'm living life to the fullest. So you, did you ever officially 100% say, I am retired? Or did you just stop? Um, no, I mean, when... When I uh, when I basically said uh, and it would have been January 2013, I said I'm going to retire now. Yeah. But if one of these three men step forward, and it, and not too much time has elapsed, I'm not 300 pounds now or yeah. this nature. I would seriously contemplate about coming back. And it literally, that that list was for I would do one more match with a, a Mark Coleman, yeah. a Ken Shamrock, a Hoist Gracie. Those last three. I go, I go, I want us all to be drug tested because I want them all to know that Dan Sarah finished out his career chemical free. Yeah. Uh, Respect. Those, those, those three names that I, I name, they say they can't say that. Right. They've all three have popped and stuff like that. So you fought a ridiculous amount of fights. We've said 127. It's probably more. It's definitely more. Okay, we'll just, definitely more. Yeah, is, there one, is there one fight or one fighter that you wish you could have had, but somehow it just, Stars never aligned, and you well, never met inside the ring. Because, but you, but usually you, you didn't finish the aspect of usually about people saying, well, "Back in your prime." See, the UFC never had me in my prime. I started at age thirty-seven. Who still is competing at age thirty-seven? And only until recently did you have one of the oldest champions. About I started at thirty-seven, and I went for twenty years. Now that's pretty yeah. incredible. Yeah. Now, especially when you think about only doing two training camps. In a 20 year span, two. Now I tell people, gosh, and you talk about how many matches I've had, how many victories I've had. I'm thinking, gosh, just think if I would have really applied myself, I really could have made something of myself. <laughs> but I always tell people, there's nothing wrong with my cognitive speech or thought pattern. That is correct. You don't see a broken nose, you don't see busted out teeth, you don't even see cauliflowered ears. No. Nope. I always tell people that I'm a giver. I have a big heart. I'm a giver, not a receiver here right now. Okay? Yeah. I love it. Well, Dan, we appreciate you. I'm getting the eye that they need to move you around. There's a lot okay, of people no to problem. go talk to. But well, thank you guys for giving right now, us a couple to, minutes. To, to, to you folks out there, you want to learn more about what this old cat still has going on, simply go to my website at dansever.com. Easy enough right there. I can remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I like to make life easy. <laughs> I, I know myself. Dan Sever, absolute legend of the sport, man. Absolutely pleasure. Thank you for doing that, Dan. We appreciate it. Have fun on the rest of the day. We appreciate it. I guess we'll see a, another fight in the very near future. We'll carve out some time for that. Unbelievable. I mean, like we're getting we're getting legends in the, in the building here. Can't forget my little my duffel bag. <laughs> Don't forget your bag. <laughs> Lily from Jim's pole bar. Now we've got Dan Legend. Seven. I mean, this is this is this is great stuff. So anybody who's watched this sport or is getting into the history of this sport, these are the people that made this sport. It's pretty set it on the way to us to be able to sit here in, a, in an arena like this, in a building like this, with all these people, and to celebrate the sport and to chat about it the way we do it right now. It's awesome. It was those, it was those early fights, man. It was those early fights that yeah. we all fell in love with, right? That yeah. we all, that, that we all, I mean, saw all the sport and thought, man, this is something that I, I want to be a part of. And uh, yeah. Dan was one of those guys, man. He was an absolute monster. It's crazy to see just how many fights he's had. And he's still running rings around us now. Oh, my gosh. Crazy. That was awesome. He's got more energy than I have today, man. That's crazy. <laughs> I love it. I love it.